Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Michelle, the subject for today is affairs. You just found out your partner's had an affair. What the heck do you do? Now, is this an yeah. affair to remember? No, no, no. <laughs> This is a, most affairs people would like to forget, but they can't. Right. Very true. What, yeah. do, what do you do when your yeah. spouse has an affair? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I could just, yeah, I'm feeling it, just imagining that moment. So the main thing I want to start with is just that you're going to have a lot of feelings about this. It's going to be intense. It's going to be a roller coaster. My most important invitation is to get some confidential support for yourself. Um, like me, someone, a coach, a counselor, a therapist, you're going to have a mix of feelings, anger, hurt, and you need to be very careful and judicious, I would say, about who you decide to share this with. Because sometimes if you share with the wrong person, that person's agenda or feelings about it can just give it a life of its own. So yeah, that's my main, my first thing I want to say is that it's just, you tell somebody, they start gossiping. Oh, that he did, you know, she did. They're angry. They're blaming. They're never going to look at your, your partner in the same way again. And I, you know, not everybody will do this, right? But some people will, and it really can, you know, upset your own ability to move through it and process it for you because this is not the time to run for the exits, in my opinion, of a relationship. People can do crazy things. They can do revenge relationships. They can, you know, scrape, scratch up cars. They can tell friends and family. And, and it's just like, just in that heated moment of anger or frustration or hurt. And you can create so much more wreckage than what was already done. So that's my main, I implore you. <laughs> to at first do what you can. I mean, you need support probably. And maybe you have a close friend that you can absolutely trust, but I can't really emphasize that enough because it's just, it, I, yeah, it can really go south. And then, and then the ability to reconcile is, 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 is gone forever sometimes um, just by that reactivity. And it, it's understandable. I mean, I, I, I understand that you're hurt, but yeah. So <sighs> I think you got it, huh? <laughs> Well, that, okay, so you know, we, we, we hit a nerve there. Yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah. that's really important advice because um, the, you're right. The first thing somebody who's hurt wants to do is strike out. And, right. uh, and that's where the damage... It's kind of like uh, in a previous segment, we talked about uh, volatile, volatile relationships, people fighting. It's the fighting back sometimes right. uh, that yeah. creates the bigger problem from the original attack. And, and, and exactly. this is great. That's great perspective. That really is important. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, it, cause I, I just, I mean, I really, I'm a, I'm a believer in relationships. I'm a believer in the value of, you know, especially you've been together a long time or even a short time, you've built a connection and it's not something, I mean, yeah, take your, you know, not every relationship can heal from this, but, some can, and I just invite people to give it a chance, basically. So yeah. the first thing is to take take some time, right? You need to take time to heal, to feel, to fully assess the situation. Um, try not to blame your partner, the affair partner, or yourself, right? Because while you're, you, you and your partner are responsible for your relationship, you can't be responsible for somebody else's choices or their behavior, right? So, you know, you might think, oh, I wasn't this enough or that enough or who's that? interloper, you know, and it just, it's, it's complex. I mean, the reasons people have affairs are very complex. Sometimes it's, um, sure. and I guess when I say affair, sometimes it can be a one night stand, it could be either, but you know, you're on a business trip, you have a little bit too much to drink, whatever. I mean, things like that can happen, but it's sort of like, um, you, you know, you really need to add, talk to your partner at this point and ask for the truth. And cause your best chance to resolve things is to hear you know, not have it drip out over, oh, well, actually, there was this time, and actually, there was this other person. 
like this is the time to really come clean and to and and maybe you want to do this with the help of a counselor working with you together because it, it can be difficult to share uncomfortable news but it does need to be you know i'm not saying the nitty-gritty details like we don't need to talk about what well, did you like it more than what you know sex with her, her or him more than me that's not what i'm talking about but you know what is going on really how long has this been going on was this just a one thing is this somebody that the person knows so you really need to be you don't want to feel like you're in the dark about it and you want to get some information but definitely keep your curiosity in check you know so some of the things like well what is the answer to this question that i want to ask how is that, is that going to help me? Is that going to help me get closer to understanding what happened? And, you know, people have that reason of why, like they want to know why. And it's, you know, it can be something in the relationship. They weren't feeling satisfied. They weren't feeling cared for. Um, they novelty seeking, right? I mean, we, we did another segment on ethical non-monogamy, but, you know, some people it's not in their nature. It's, it's difficult to not feel that for other people and want to act on it. So, all these things are kind of um, basically there's a lot of suddenly loose ends and and messiness to discover together. And well, yeah. one, of the, one of the things I found really interesting uh, about uh, uh, your uh, reaction is that for the first time in the 20 or 30 episodes that we've done together, uh, you didn't say you didn't sort of lead to us. Well, how do we fix it? How do we take a deep breath and fix it? How do we take a deep breath and then find somebody we can trust? And now that person to trust could be an attorney who's probably going to egg you on towards uh, divorce, uh, or a coach such as yourself who might have you think of several different solutions because right. it, it, it's not necessarily just you and your partner. There could be kids, little kids versus older kids versus kids out of the house. There could be uh, just all sorts of other complications with it. So sure. you're, uh, 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 I would take it a step further to say, uh, uh, depending upon how blatant and just how just awful you feel, probably the, the best advice out of all of this is that uh, find yourself somebody that you can confide in. My suggestion would be uh, a professional who's not an attorney, unless you just say, well, that's oh, it. absolutely. Okay, so the, yeah. if, maybe a, a day later you go to the attorney, but first find out how do I get myself together so that I can yeah. process it. Yeah, right, good, right. Good but even, I mean, a day is, uh, I mean, it can take months, a year, two years sometimes to resolve and to get moved past a relationship. But basically the main thing is that to act rashly initially when you're really hurt is not going to be probably what you would choose if you took more time to let it settle, to learn more, to see, wow, how was I, you know, avoiding my partner or how, you know, there might have been, I'm not, not that there's like, I'm talking about blame, but it's just, let's take responsibility how nourishing was this relationship before? What was missing maybe before? Because sometimes the relationship that they had wasn't really that satisfying for whatever reason. And like I said, it's not always as some partners are kind of have a chronic challenge around fidelity. And that's something else to look at. Is that something that you can live with with this partner, right? But, but sometimes it's uh, something's missing here and we're not really meeting each other's needs. And so let's look at that. Like let, we could actually build a whole more beautiful, more nourishing relationship together if we're really honest and seeing what's what hasn't been working. Because sometimes that's when an affair, you know, we're vulnerable to an affair when things aren't going well in our own relationship. I don't mean that as a threat, but just there's something to pay attention to here, right? Right, right. But the first, the first step, and, and that was great advice, is kind of take a breath. Uh, take a breath, think about who you're going to talk to and pick somebody you can trust. So that's that's a terrific yeah. beginning uh, for right. a bad relate for a bad situation. Michelle, thank yeah. you. Yeah, pick someone who's yeah. oh yeah, one quick thing. Pick someone not, not just just someone you can trust, but somebody that's an unbiased about the situation. Oh, good. Right, good who's like has a, a separate perspective on it because yes. you don't want them to be like oh that dirty dog. You know, you don't want that person to be joining in. You want that person to help you. What's really going on for you? Because everybody feels differently about that kind of thing. It's it's. So you probably yeah, shouldn't. So, you probably shouldn't go to your mother or mother. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Okay. Uh, yeah, and okay. Okay. be kind I'm, I'm yourself. Ready. And go yeah. to, the first person you should go to is Michelle. That's, <laughs> that's who you should the, the, love to the, support you people in that. Yeah, it's it can be a really beautiful process, and it's not easy, but it 
um, a lot of healing. And, um, and even if you do decide to go your separate ways, it's like, why not make that all just smoother and easier for you? And if you have children, et cetera. So, yeah. Good. Good stuff. Thank you, Michelle. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.